What's up, baby? Wait, that's not how I do it. What's up, baby? Yeah, that's it. That's it's Joshua Campbell, also known as Tiger, here with Storm Unity Podcast. And to my left, Kevin Fields. What? I mean, to your south, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's actually in, yeah. Oh, it is south. Yes, yes. Just, answer, just, just, just introduce yourself. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> and to my, literally to my right, Lindsay. Hello. I was speeding up the intro, but Kevin didn't let me. <laughs> That's okay. Um, you should warn people before you start lying. Well, I just kind of want to, you know, improv through, you know, kind of be real with the people. And now you're making it longer. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just trying to... Just trying to roll into the fact that we're on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and TuneIn Radio. So please subscribe to us on either of those three thingies. And uh, we don't have to be on other things like YouTube. But we could be. But it would take a lot more work for me. Yes. Yes. No one say anything. Yeah. Thank you. That's correct. I mean, if you, if you do a lot of uh, a lot more work, it'll pay off. So. Well... Sorry, I don't have the cheeks for that. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. So, how you been, Kevin? Uh, I've been okay. I haven't been doing anything too exciting. Just been, uh, you know, just chilling, hanging out, playing, playing some video games. My life's not too exciting either, but I did play basketball yesterday for the first time oh, in years. Dang. It's been years since so, I played basketball. So, tell me, how many air balls did you throw up? Yo, yo, <laughs> like at least ten. Like the first couple shots, you have to get used to it again. You're like, man, <laughs> I, I can't make anything. <laughs> What happened was, when I did the first few shots, it was like, man, I still got it. And then the air balls came. Oh. Yeah. So it happened so, backwards. <laughs> yeah. And I played 21, and I'm so old, and I'm so out of shape, and I got so tired with the person I was playing 21 with that we changed it to 13. How old was he, 13? <laughs> You're funny. It's like, hey, kid, um, want to play some 21? Yeah, we played the 13, and I won 13 to 4, so... Nice. That's my story about yesterday. Yay! Yay! Yesterday. What have you been doing, Lindsay? Uh, playing video games. Man, I guess I'm the one slacking off. Because <laughs> everyone's playing video games except me. Well, that's okay. It's not really okay. This is a video game podcast, but we have plenty of video games to talk about because it is Tuesday, September 30th, 2014, and you're listening to the Storm Unity Podcast! <laughs> are releasing this month I was waiting on. Is Kevin, like, highly anticipating any game this year? You know, like, I might actually not get Smash Day 1, because, I mean, honestly, I'd rather have the Wii U version. I'm getting Smash Day 1. I'm sorry, I support Nintendo, and I'm going to buy Smash Day 1. Plus, we get a coin. Oh, yeah, the Best Buy coin. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um... I don't think he's getting that, because he doesn't support Best Buy no more, former employee. I mean, it's not oh. that, I just don't really... Now, if it was a Metroid coin, I'd be all about that. <laughs> Dude, he doesn't support Nintendo. He supports Metroid. <laughs> so he hasn't supported Nintendo in I years. I support the Galactic Federation. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about what we're currently playing. Kevin, do you want to bore us with what you're currently playing? I've been playing Diablo 3. It's a really fun game. It's an online what? RPG. What? what? No yeah, I've been playing. Way. I've been playing Diablo 3 again. Yeah. Kevin, please. Uh, Still. Please entice us or entertain us with a story featuring you in Diablo 3. I mean, it's not really entertaining. I mean, it's an, it's entertaining to Kevin, play. don't just you gotta build up your story, <laughs> not the opposite. Go all right, on. So, Alright, so check this out. I finally completed my set so I can have all my finishes out and they're summoned forever. They don't die until they actually die instead of, like, you know, their time of running out. So it's, like, really cool. Is that good enough? Did you say your fetishes? I like that. Yeah, no. they're, they're like little tiny creatures that are maybe, like, a foot tall. Oh, so they actually are called fetishes. Yes. (laughs) 
Okay. That's why if you saw on Facebook, I posted a picture saying, I have a lot of fetishes. Wink. Wow. No wonder. No one understood. I mean, I'm sure a few people understood. Did I, anyone comment, Kevin? No. <laughs> yeah, that's a little creepy. <laughs> Especially if no one understood what was talking about. Okay, oh, I don't even moving. care. It was moving a picture on. of a video game. No oh, it's like, oh, talks. Kevin's got a video game fetish. Weird. Oh. Yeah, what do you mean, wait? It's your turn, Lindsay. Oh. What have you been playing? I've been playing... I've been playing with your heart. No. Bad jokes. <laughs> Nobody does with that. Gotcha. <laughs> I played... Um, Artanella... Nope. Our No Surge. Ode to an Unborn Star. For... 20 minutes. Ooh. Because it took... 30 minutes to install on the PS3. Ooh, damn. So, yeah. so it took <laughs> her a long. total of 50 minutes just to play those 20 minutes. Yeah, so um, I don't have a real reaction to that game yet. So, but thanks, I did start o- thanks Obama, for the install. <laughs> <laughs> but I really been playing Hyrule Warriors, and I beat it. And I had a lot of fun with it, and it's really fun, and I'm still playing it. So, What's fun about it? Um, <laughs> it's not a field game. <laughs> <laughs> so, because it's um, it's it's a really laid back story is the way I can describe it. So you're kind of not you're hey, just focused maybe, on killing a bunch of people. I was gonna say let's uh, change this question. Let's uh, talk to a person that's never played Hyrule Warriors before and don't know what to expect. What should they expect? If they've never played any just kind describe of dynasty, the game. Story? yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you start off as Link, and you gotta kill. Hordes of enemies to take over a map that you start off on, and um, you run into new characters. And basically, as you run into these characters, you're, they're playable. So, like the next map, you can play as one of two characters, and the next map you play as one of three characters. But you could still pick Link if you want to. But um, oh, you can actually pick. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, like the second map, you can play as Link or Impa, and then like the third map, you could play as Link, Impa, or Lana, I think, and then it kind of adds on characters as sometimes you meet them and they're not playable for another couple rounds, and then like er, you got to play as Sheik really early on too, and then Minna and a bunch of other characters came about, and I still can't play. Oh, I think I can play as Rudo now, but I still haven't unlocked all the characters even though I beat Legend mode. Rudo, which one is that? The ice, yeah, girl. She's the thing. Zora princess. Yeah, that girl. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the Zelda girl. I'm. I don't know that much Zelda. She's the Zora princess. Okay, so it's basically Dynasty Warriors. If you played Dynasty Warriors, you played this game. Except, what's different about this than Dynasty Warriors? Um, well, they definitely. It it feels like a Dynasty Warrior game's full of Zelda. Uh, I always want to call it cookies, but they're not cookies. <laughs> References. And, uh, oh, what's the little like a little? Like, yeah, Easter okay. Easter eggs. Yeah, a little there Easter eggs. So like, okay. you get a treasure chest and it opens with the Zelda, you know, do 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 do, and then you like you get items in the field and then da 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 da, and you know, and gold skeletons appear on the map and you can collect the gold. And there's a hundred of them. And you can collect those and they make little they make uh uh pictures like like on the 3ds puzzle finder thing. So, like, you collect a gold skulletella and it puts a new puzzle piece in your puzzle. And I guess those those will look cool to collect. I haven't gotten one yet, though. I'm actually going through and trying to get the skulletellas. I mean, you haven't gotten one. I haven't gotten a full picture yet. Oh, a full picture. Yeah, yeah. You've gotten skulletellas. Yeah, I've okay. gotten skulletellas. <laughs> I'm going by and trying to get all the skulletellas. Because sometimes you just, you're doing so much on the map that you don't have time to run. Because the skulletella will appear usually ten minutes or, like, five minutes into the, the game. And then it's usually on the other side of the map. So you either got to drop what you're doing and run over there, or you, or it disappears. It's only on the field for, like, two minutes. And then it just disappears. You don't have a chance to. So you have to, like, prepare yourself. You can't just, like, drop everything you're doing. You run and go get Skull Tull, because then you'll lose the, the level. Okay. So you really enjoyed it? I really love it. Okay. I really like the game. Um, but I really love Dynasty Warriors, too. Like what? Dynasty Warriors. Oh, okay. Also. Okay. And Samurai Warriors. How's that sound, Kevin? I'll I'll have to play it to, to have any sort of impression. <laughs> oh, and the moves are really um cool. Like, uh, I heard a pony is pretty cool. <laughs> I haven't played a pony yet. That just came out. I lost spoilers. It's the DLC. <laughs> but like, um, 
it's usually really simple where you push X, X, or actually in this case, Y, 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 and you do your combo. But, like, you'll get um, upgrades where you add, like, a new Y move, and then in between your Ys, I can do Y, X, and X will be your strong move. And it's the same in Dynasty Warriors, but they're really, really, um... Like, they took a really long time to learn about all the characters in the Zelda universe and, and make moves for them that, that fit their character, like... Um, like, Link does a bunch of spinning shit, and, uh, like, Minna uses her hair for a bunch of her power moves, and it's, it's just, it's really cool. Like, um, Ganondorf is kind of like Minna in the fact where if you use some of his power moves, he, he, this, this, this giant hand comes out of the realm, and it's basically his Ganon form, but he uses an arm to grab you and throw you and stuff, and, like, Impa does, like, a, like, a, <laughs> Sheik has like a, a, a volcano move, and she also has like a water move because she's all about Does the. Sheik have a whip. Her chain. Oh, her chain thing? thing. Yeah, chain whip. I I haven't played much of Sheik because you unlock a bunch of weapons when you play them. Oh. Uh, so okay. I've only I, played Sheik like, like once. I want the chain whip. So all he has right now, or all she has right now, is a harp. That's what I use in Smash all the time. Like whip, 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 so whip. Annoying. I have to ask: <laughs> Have you fought any Kukos yet, or is that part of the DLC too? Yes. No, you can pl- you can fight Kukos, <laughs> and I fought one, and I tried to see what would happen, and he beat it enough times, and like it becomes a whole another army on your on your field, <laughs> and it's really annoying because you can't really kill them. So they just follow you around and peck the shit out of you. <laughs> and then they break your combo because they'll peck you in the... Uh, but it was Just fun. don't do it. Yeah. Just don't. There is one, there is one uh, challenge mode where, uh, like, in the middle... Like, the challenge was to beat this guy. And in the midst of the challenge mode, this this cuckoo chick pops up. And she's like, find my mommy! So she's got to <laughs> follow you to find your mom. But I got distracted. And apparently you have a limited time to go find the mom. Oh. And so the cuckoo, the little cuckoo chick fled. And I didn't notice, and then suddenly there's this giant gold choke uh, cuckoo following me around and trying to kill me. And I was, what is happening? And I had to scroll through like the the log of the battle. It it showed that Mama Cuckoo is infuriated with you because you did because <laughs> you let the chick run away. And I was like, what is happening? And it was it was really funny and scary. But it's like shit like that, you know, like little Easter eggs they throw in. It's like a Zelda game, but it's basically by, made by people who love Zelda, like, but not. The people who made Zelda, which is true, but yeah, it, 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 that's what it feels like. You're just kind of like, yeah, this is really good. Ah, that was funny because it relates to that one girl who was in that one game, and that makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing. That's <laughs> fan service. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, okay. All right, let's move on to me. Unless you have any more. Yep. Okay. Nope. Cool. Um. So I finally downloaded the Mighty Number no. Nine beta. Ooh. Yeah, and finally, I, yeah, like it's we been out. PAX. Yeah, it's been out ever since uh, PAX, the yeah. PAX, PAX Prime. Yeah, they they had the uh, um, panel and they gave everyone there a beta code. And also, if you paid whatever that level was in the Kickstarter, then you would get that beta code. Um, but it was basically released that day. They gave us all the sheets of paper with all the codes on it, and I just now uh, installed it last night, and I played through it. And it's, I mean, you kind of want it to be like Mega Man, but you know these these graphics are totally updated to like next gen style. Right. Um, you like his movements are not you know simple. It's like very fluid, and you know he has he has his his Buster move. I don't know what it's actually called. Um, he has a, he has his dash. In fact, you can dash like over and over again. Like I jumped in the air, and you can like dash 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 dash. <laughs> It's really awesome, but this game actually focuses really hard on the dash because just as in Azure Striker Gun Vault, um, you have to tag your enemies and then use the electric field to destroy them. In this game, you have to use your buster move, like your regular shot move, and every enemy has a specific number of shots, which weakens the enemy. And when you see that enemy weakened, you have to actually dash into them. Okay, so that's why, like, like in the videos I've seen, like, in the past, that they're always dashing through enemies. I thought they were just doing that just to, like, show it off. Like, hey, I can dash through and kill enemies. Yeah, that's actually the way to kill the enemy. You can shoot them as many times as you want. They won't die. You have to actually dash into them. Oh, and I okay. think the way the actual system works is the faster you dash into them right after they weaken, the uh, better your score is and the higher your combo is. So it's like... Um, if you were to hit them and then they weaken and then you immediately dash into them, you get a hundred percent. Um, and that starts off your combo at one. And then as as many times as you go through all these enemies, as long as you do them at 100%, 
um, you'll add to your combo. Okay. And I'm sure there's other like things that go into it, like the items that you get, but I didn't really read into them that hard. This is just like the basics that I'm giving. And let's say that you you know you weaken a character, but you wait like two seconds before you kill them, you'll get a lower percentage, like eighty percent or fifty percent or ten percent, and it'll break your combo. So that's the basic um, gameplay for Mighty Number no. Nine at, in the beta, and for the bosses. And the boss that I played was a. Uh, I think number two. I don't remember what he was called, but that was the number two. He, the way the bosses work in the game, you do the same thing. It takes like maybe 20 or 30 shots in order to weaken them. And then you have to immediately weaken them, like immediately. And that's how you really get their energy down. If you weaken them and then you don't dash immediately into them, they actually build up their HP again. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you have to actually hit them with your dash in order to make them lose HP, or else they'll regain their hit points, and then you'll be back where you started. So, like, the first few times I played through, I, like, I kept missing the dash, so they would, like, be back at full health again. So you have to restart all over again. Oh, wow. (laughs) So it makes it a little difficult, but once you get, like, the play style down and everything, it's kind of no problem. It's kind of like regular Mega Man. It's really, really hard until you figure out the pattern and what you need to do. And then you're like, oh, okay, I got this. So um, that's the only stage I played. It looks really promising, looks really fun. And I'm looking forward to it when it comes out next year. As do I. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, he can ledge grab. Thought that was important to say. (laughs) Air dashes. Oh, I said that. You can jump and dash like three times. You can dash like over and over and over again. That's like the, that's like really fun for me to just mash the dash, <laughs> and like it like literally works. As what about wall jumping? Um, there is no wall jumping. Really? Huh. In the beta, there was no wall jumping. Interesting. There is only ledge grabbing and then dashing. I'm trying to think what else there is. There are little areas that where you have to climb up a ladder and then once you like. Immediately, once you like jump off the ladder, you have to dash to the next ladder. So it makes you do that a lot. There's like the classic where you're falling down like a, a large pit and you have to stay away from the spikes on both walls. I mean, th- those are the things that I currently like remembered from the time I played yesterday. So, but yeah, it's really fun. Uh, the second game that I played for about a good uh, hour, it's called Half Minute Hero. Super Mega Neo Climax Ultimate Boy. It's basically an homage to JRPGs. Yeah. Just take take your like old school Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, take any of those games. Like that's what this game is, except speed it up like one hundred times. Okay, yeah. Okay, so yeah, what it what it is is you're this guy and you like you know, oh no, the castle's under attack. You have to, you have to save it from this demon in thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, the way it works, just envision yourself walking on like the world map, and then you have random encounters, and then you fight them. It's just like that, except as this thirty-second timer is moving, you're like speeding across this world map, trying <laughs> to get to uh, this castle. And as you, like, speed across this map, you get random encounters, but the random encounters take, like, two seconds. Oh, wow. Because, like, when you're in the random encounter, your your player is going... It's like a side-scrolling, like, fight. Your player is moving to the right, and the monsters are moving to the left, and you're literally just hitting each other going boom, boom, boom. (laughs) And each time you hit each other, it does HP damage to you, and it does HP damage to them. But obviously you kill them because you're stronger. But the more battles you do, the higher levels you get, the higher levels you get, the stronger you become. So it's basically like the warrior wear of like RPG games or, or something. <laughs> In a sense, I guess. Um, you have to build up yourself to a strong enough level so when you get to the castle, when you're side-scrolling toward the boss, you can actually kill the boss versus actually getting killed. And you say, how do you, the hell do you do that in 30 seconds? Well, if you go to a town, it actually stops the time. And then there's this little statue where you can actually buy more time. Oh. So you, you go to the statue and it says, hey, it costs 100 gold to get 30 seconds back. So you pay 100 gold and you get 30 seconds back. So you go around, fight some more, you come back, and then you say, hey, you want more time? 
it's going to be 200 gold this time. So the more you use it, the more expensive it gets. Okay. And every time you visit the town, you can buy, like, meat to heal your health all the way back to full, which costs, like, 15 gold. Each time you battle, you get gold. Each time you battle, it ups your experience, which ups your level, which makes you stronger. So basically, you're going through, like, hundreds of levels. I'm th- I, th- I think there's hundreds of levels in this game. Like, and that's the premise of the game. It's it's like a very sped up Final Fantasy Chrono Trigger, and when you compare the two, it's like, yep, it's the same type of game, <laughs> except <laughs> this one's way faster. And just at you know at first glance, you're just like, man, this is some shit. Like, what is this? <laughs> but you can really get like they have a leaderboard like with speed running, and that really kind of says, okay, I'm gonna beat this bitch, you know. <laughs> One of, like the first level, the highest score is by you remember the guy, the caped caper. Yeah. He's one of our friends. He beat the first level in fourteen seconds, and right now I'm just like, how the hell did he beat it in fourteen seconds? <laughs> nice. Like my score is twenty seven seconds. So I don't know, but yeah, that's that's the other game that I've been playing. I had a good time with it, and I I kind of recommend it. I think I don't remember how I got it. I don't know if I paid like ninety nine cents. I'm sure it was either free or like really cheap. So that's why I bought it. So, um, oh, and one more thing, just as a side note, I played this game called Duet. It is a game that I cannot describe, but it will make you rage. Really? <laughs> We've seen it at PAX it's, the last, like, three times. Yeah, it's it's been at PAX the last few times, and literally they're, like, blocks that are scrolling downward, and you're, like, these two balls, a red ball and a blue ball. And when you press right or left, it spins the balls like left or right in a circular motion. So just imagine like two balls like like two inches from each other and when you turn right, they literally go clockwise or counterclockwise. Oh, okay. So they stay two inches from each other but the balls like actually um, go in a clockwise or counterclockwise motion and as you as the stage scrolls down, they're like shapes that like come down toward the balls and you have to like make it so that the balls don't hit these shapes. Oh, okay. So you're literally spinning around left and right, trying to avoid these shapes that come down. Trying to make the shapes go in between the balls. Yeah, you can go in between them or just dodging them, and then there are ways where um, it makes you like move a certain way. So you have to know the pattern in order to get past the stage. And each stage is like maybe 10 seconds long. And right now is a free demo. It's called Duet, and it's on Steam completely free and you will rage and you probably won't complete the demo <laughs> <laughs> so if you want a free game go play duet demo and it's probably all you need for now <laughs> to make you pissed off at video games anyway all right that's our segment for currently playing and we'll move on to before we move to headlines we want to talk about new releases that are coming out in the video game realm and Lindsay will uh, kick us off with that there's not very many this week, and I left out some, but even if I put them in, there's still not very many. Um, today, Sherlock Holmes' Crimes and Punishment was released, which so far has gotten pretty good reviews. The last the last game got really good reviews, so everyone was sort of expecting it to be better, and it is so far. But it's, it's a game I really want to play, but it's probably like a niche kind of game. They're hoping this one will make it more popular. What kind of game is it? People were describing it to be kind of like L.A. Noir, but also like a Telltale game. So I don't know if it's it didn't look it wasn't point and click on the on the trailer, but so it's like a third person like kind of open world type of. Well, game? you're following Sherlock Holmes, like you are Sherlock Holmes, and you're trying to figure out this 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 this, this murder this murder, and um you got to go and talk to people and figure out your evidence and stuff and um. But it, I think it's more just kind of a story-based game than it is super action-y or anything. Okay. So I'm interested in it, and I was like, well, maybe I should play the other game, and I wouldn't go try to buy it, and it's like 80 bucks on Amazon, so maybe I'll find it cheaper somewhere else. But you can still buy the new game for cheaper than that, so maybe I'll just play the new one. The other game released is Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, which is the new fighting game for Persona Universe. Um... So you can go get that if you want. She don't know nothing about that. Persona 4. <laughs> um, it's a game. You play fighting games. That's yeah. what you get. It's an anime fighting game. Yeah, Persona 4 Arena is the first version of the game, and they came out with this as the sequel. Yep. 
and apparently Persona 4 Arena is really good, so they decided to try it again. The other game that got really will get released. Actually, it was released today. Right? Was it? Go yeah, on. it was released or it was released today or yesterday or whatever. Shadow uh Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, which was supposed to be released October seventh, but it got pushed back to be released early, which I don't know of any games that do that. Pushed but forward. They have pushed forward, right. <laughs> Although, yeah, Although it makes it's kind of weird when you think about it. When you I understand. It. So that game has been highly anticipated because it looks really cool, and so you can go buy that because yeah, apparently that's you got to be a bunch of awards at E three or something. Yeah, it's it's it's. Okay, tell me what the difference is between that and like, and Skyrim. Uh, you're following a guy around who isn't. It's not an RPG. When you say you're following a guy. I you mean, you're playing a guy. You're playing as a guy. Okay. And I don't know his name because he's like a he's a new character. It's not like, it's not like a, yeah. So you're this guy, and he gets powers from doing something. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and his power is he can take over. He can take over um the orcs and turn them against them. And it's like it's strategy based actiony game where you 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 take control of these of these orcs and then you make them go higher up in rank like you get an orc a, a orc peon and you make him battle the orc captain and if he wins then your orc peon is now an orc captain and you have like a list of them in your in your inventory and you go like all right cool he's a captain i'm going to need more captains and you use that to win somehow Okay, so it's not like a top-down strategy game. It's it's a third-person, yeah, like type of strategy. It's game. not like Skyrim at all, so I was a little confused. Well, when I said Skyrim because that's the type of setting. Yes. So I'm also thinking like The Witcher. The Witcher is yes. a game where you're a third person. You have a sword and you're you killing should... things and you're trying to you know yes. battle, conquering things and you go should... to castles and yes. Yeah. You should be more thinking, I think, of like Assassin's Creed and almost like Dynasty Warriors. Because you get a bunch of horde of enemies and you just run right through them. Oh, okay. And they've got really cool, like, the, 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 the motion of the fighting is really solid and fluid and just looks really real and very responsive is what they people have been saying. I know it's a highly anticipated game. I just didn't know anything about it. I thought it was really weird because it was highly, because, like, the, you know, the, the Lord of the Rings games have always just been, oh, cool, do the battle of Mordor. I just think the word Mordor is just so, it like... Everyone, it makes everyone want it. You think? If I made a game called Mordor, everyone would be like, "Oh, what is Mordor's in Disney Infinity?" Mordor. Mordor's. <laughs> I don't know. Funny. I mean, it's the it's it's the word Mordor makes me think like epic. Like this game's gonna be epic because it's called Mordor. I guess there I will mean... be magic. There will be wizards. <laughs> there will be mages. That's almost the same thing. I mean, I guess that's probably why they use the there title. There will be horses and spears and castles and and whores. Wenches is not whores. They're called wenches. Yeah, my bad. My bad. Those are pirates. You wench. They're called... Listen to me. <laughs> wenches are like your wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and the other game that's going to be released this week is Super Smash Brothers for the 3DS. Yay! Yay! That's released on the 3rd. Yay! And Kevin's being a hater. What? I just I said yay. You can play it now. You can go play it. And then you just unlock characters really easily. Apparently, I didn't read it. I bought it. You just, like, you go through ten battles and you get a new character or something like that. Oh, in Smash? Yeah. That's, oh, okay. That's how you unlock them, apparently. You just bite. You just you just settle it in Smash. Just play the game and you unlock characters. That's basically how I see it. <laughs> Not like Mewtwo thing, though. Like, you had to play 700 games, I think, to unlock Oh, yeah. Games. Something Man, crazy. That was, I remember those days. Those are hard. Yeah, I think that's that's everything I had. Yeah, so that's all that's released till next week. I only do them by the week, by the way. All right, well, thank you for that. Lindsay! You're welcome. All right, so Kevin. What's up? You know what time it is? Headlines. Headlines! Headlines! So let me know first. do like a little music right there. Headlines! Oh, yeah, because I do the news thing. All right, we're starting with Kevin. Okay, I kind of said this game isn't or hasn't been announced for us yet, but uh, it's a new shop game coming out in Japan. Uh, it's called, forgive me if I say this wrong because it's in Japanese, Ishi Sengoku Den Sadami. 
Um, it's a, a top-down action RPG game uh, based off of traditional Japanese creatures and stuff like that. Uh, it looks pretty cool because, like, uh, since, since it's a top-down RPG, it makes you think of, like, games like Secret of Mana, Secret of Evermore, and stuff like that. Oh, so it's like for it's like live action, like yeah. you go up to enemies and then kill them. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, it, it's only announced for Japan so far. I mean, I imagine it probably only be in Japan, but here's the hoping it comes out here in America because it looks cool. I like samurai and stuff like that, and anything to do with swords. You don't like samurai warriors? I like samurai warriors. <laughs> Shut up. I didn't think so. Okay, go on. <laughs> I knew what you were saying or <laughs> going with that when you said that. But wait, Samurai Warriors is like Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, that's that's why I was like. <laughs> oh, okay. Go on. <laughs> Sorry, uh, did me to make you lose your train. No, it's okay. Um, choo choo. I mean, I know. I'm pretty sure, hundred percent sure, we'll be getting this. But uh, so far, it's only been uh, officially announced in in Japan, and now over in Australia, New Zealand, they'll be getting the new 3DS in November. But it said for us that we won't be seeing it until next year. So, what's up with that? It's not official. Rude. America may not receive new 3DS. <laughs> until next year. Although, Monster Hunter 4 is out so next year, so it's we're definitely getting it. But hey, no no release date for us. What, Maybe what the there will be a bundle. That? I'm sure there will be a bundle. Oh, you mean for Monster Hunter? Yeah, for Monster Hunter. That would be actually a, an amazing bundle. I would be, I would be down for that. That would be dope. Okay, you heard it here first, guys. If uh, <laughs> if Monster Hunter Four has a bundle, he's going to get it. And I'm gonna get that. It. He's gonna get that. I'm gonna get that, and, uh, and it's I guess... gonna have it's gonna have Isabella on the front. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, last for me, the Pokemon Trading Card Game launches on the iPad today. So yay! Even though I won't be playing it, it's he free. doesn't even like Pokemon. It's free, isn't it? Not as much as I used to. Yeah, it's free to play, and of course, you can also you know pay to. Well, I'll say pay to win. It's probably going to be just like <laughs> Earthst- like Hearthstone. Yeah. And it's, the fact I'm, that I'm, you can play for free, you get a deck, but like you can also buy packs. And I'm sure it's going to be very popular because, you know, it's freaking Pokemon. So I didn't know that, and I have an iPad, so I'm probably going to download it. Yep. Let's see how it goes. I've never played Pokemon the card game before. So. I have like, like it was. I mean, I imagine uh, this is the same, it's like the same, like the, you know, the Game Boy game. If someone I, uses water, you use fire. I actually what? never played no. that. No. Use oh, I'm grass. sorry. I'm sorry. Jeez, Pokemon. Reverse it. Reverse it. <laughs> You've already lost. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Kevin? Uh, that's it. Okay. All right, guys. On to more headlines from Zyger. <laughs> Hi, guys. Okay, Hyrule Warriors is getting a ton of new DLC. Starting on October the 16th, you're going to have Epona. Link is going to ride that horse as a weapon. It's going to be an additional weapon in the Master Quest pack, along with a new scenario, whatever that means, an adventure mode map, and new costumes. That's for the first DLC, and this is the first of four different DLCs. The second DLC is called Twilight Princess Pack, releasing in December with a new character, new weapons, adventure mode map, and new costumes. Yay. With the third pack in February and the fourth pack in March, Third pack being the Majora's Mask pack, new characters, new weapons, new costumes, and another adventure mode map. And then the last one in March called the Boss Pack with new game modes, assuming uh, um, using bosses or something like that. Do, but, you, uh, do they release what characters they are? Um, no, they didn't say what characters, but they did say that uh, a free DLC will be out soon to uh, be able to play as the villains Sia, Volga, and Wizro. And... There is no price for each DLC pack, but if you want all four, you can pay $19.99 for the season pass immediately. And if you do pay that, you will get Dark Link as a costume. So for free. Yeah. Well, for $19.99. Well, for $19.99. <laughs> yeah. So that's really awesome. And uh, I'm excited, especially if you use Epona as a weapon, because you pick your weapon in the beginning. And like, if, are you supposed to pick Epona, or are you just? I mean, because. Well, it says opponent is a weapon. Yeah, yeah. so like yeah. you run around as opponent, and, but do you also have a sword, or are you just only opponent? Like, Sounds like opponent is like the weapon. Yeah, I mean so. he's holding a sword. Or, or maybe like if you attack, maybe opponent is the weapon, but you have a sword too. So maybe they imp- implement the yeah. sword into it. I don't know. I'm sure there's gameplay out there already, so you can look it up. But uh, yeah, that'd be cool, especially for Lindsay because she's been playing Hyrule Warriors, <laughs> even though I bought it. But anyway, <laughs> I bought the guide. <laughs> Moving on. 
fans are remaking Ocarina of Time in 2D. Do you know about this, Kevin? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> yeah, how do you feel about that? Uh, cease and desist. I have a well, yes, yeah, so who cares about cease and desist if you can already download the game? It's beta, though. Uh, well, okay, so the game is 10% done, but you can currently download this current version. I'll have the website on my uh, webpage. Like, it looks like A Link to the Past, like, just looking at it. But they created, they recreated the world as Ocarina of Time, and it looks really good. I mean, that would be like me being like, hey, Kevin, someone took Super Metroid and they remade the whole game to be like Metroid Prime. That that sounds a little bit harder. <laughs> well, I mean, they're they're taking that 3D game and putting it into a 2D, 2D world. Yes, that's a lot easier than making a 2D game. But and but I'm saying like what, what I'm saying is I'm not really that I guess hyped for it. like I'm not, I'm not gonna play it is what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't see like I don't see how that example like doesn't excite me because it would excite me. I don't I see say, if like I s- how does it not excite you, Kevin? I don't know because it looks just like going to the past. Yeah, I mean, obviously there. I mean, it's using it's using a link to the past. Well, everything. I mean, they they they. You could tell they spent a lot of time on it because they, I mean they built all the levels that right. were from Ocarina of Time in just in that style. I watched a gameplay video of it. I watched someone play. Not it, only but. that, okay. they they did the soundtrack. Like they downgraded the soundtrack, and someone had to actually make the sixteen bit soundtrack. So. Well, what I was gonna say is they did a lot of really intricate stuff, but. It seems like, and again, this is only 10% done, but there's sometimes some points in the game where it's really memorable they didn't do, and I oh, wonder if that's going to carry forward. I know forward. what she's talking about. Particularly there's... in the opening sequence, when Navi's flying. When Navi's flying around, and then what, what does she bump into? She bumps into a... A to, fence thing. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's like a vine fence. You know, vines climb up. Yeah. She goes, hey, listen, you fence... No. no, she doesn't. She goes, ow! And then she flies through it. And it's like, you're waiting for that scene and just never, she just flies right to him. You're like, but, but, but she was supposed to run into a thing. <laughs> She's and, disappointed because she didn't fly into a thing. everybody knows that scene. <laughs> everybody knows it. And um, there's another scene where like, um, oh, well, like when you're in the Deku tree. And it's funny because I don't really remember the music because the Deku Tree music is just like, it's like really kind of you know just. Kind they of, use the they use the music from Link to the Past for the Deku yeah, Tree. Yeah, they use level. the generic dungeon theme. But and it's only ten percent done. Exactly. So, so let's not criticize it. Yeah. No, Would let's you, criticize let's it. This, this is this is unexcusable. It's hard to make. <laughs> it's hard to remake a game that's so beloved, and. Be conscious of the fact that what makes it beloved. Like it's I, not just because it's Ocarina of Time. It's because of oh, I remember that scene when that when Nav I ran into that fence. That was really good. I'm gonna email Nintendo right now and be like, well, these guys are trying to. No, I no, think <laughs> this this is not only that. This completely recreates the game for you to experience as if you were a kid again. So like this is what I grew up on. Link to the Past and Lindsay didn't play Link to the Past. I don't think she's ever played Link to the Past. That's Have not you? true. I've played it. You've played Pieces? Oh, I beat it. You did? Yeah, a long time ago. I thought you told me you've never Wait, played it. No, you go to the second world, right? And then there's like a bunny. And you then... told me you've never played it. There's no bunny. No. What bunny? What? So you go Link to the, the Past? Second world. Yeah. If you don't have two worlds, there's two worlds. If you don't, if you don't have the moon orb, when you go into the dark world, you turn into a bunny. Yeah, you go to you... the dark world, you oh, turn yeah. into a bunny. Yeah. That's. I swear you told me you never played it. No. Because you said you skipped Super Nintendo. Yeah, I didn't have a Super Nintendo, but I mean, the last 10 years I've had a Super Nintendo. Yeah. When I got my Super Nintendo when I was 15 from a thrift store. I swear there was a Zelda game that you said you've never played. Yeah, the Nintendo, the Game Boy ones. Uh... The one I was playing there, that yeah. was I was playing it because I never played it before. Okay, well, let's just erase everything that I said. <laughs> one thing I wanted to mention that the cutscenes look really amazing in this game. And... Oh, they, they're, yeah, they're, they do. They're putting in a lot of work. So I think they want this game to be just like Ocarina of Time from beginning to end. And it's looking like it. Although I played the demo last night and I got stuck in a wall. Like <laughs> on, on. I was, I was wondering Yeah, like on a ladder. So. You're just climbing up a ladder. Just bleh, bleh, so obviously bleh, it's not done. Bleh, bleh. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do anything. So, But I'm, I'm looking forward to it, even though Kevin's not a fan of any of these remakes. So as you're climbing up the ladder, did you hear some splutter? Uh, if only Gareth was here. Get out of here. Anyway, <laughs> next thing I wanted to mention. Why are you so excited? 
Fatal Frame's not coming to America. What? Yeah. That's that's the news. What? Okay, see, Lindsay over here is, like, like shaking with... Oh, sorry, like, sorry. Like, what? The, the headline what? is, Koei Tecmo Europe all but confirms Fatal Frame is only a Japan-only release. What? And... And apparently there was like a Twitter, like rah rah thing going on where they were using hashtag uh, We Want Fatal Frame, and Koei Tecmo replied regarding We Want Fatal Frame requests. As far as we know, this title is JP release only. Back to the office tomorrow, FYI, whatever that means. But anyway, um, he's saying, that, oh well. <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty much. Uh, they pretty much confirmed without no. actually confirming that this Fatal Frame on the Wii U is Japan only. Um, we did watch a stream of this game, and the guy did not look like he knew what he was doing He looked like he had never played a Fatal Frame but, before. But, oh, it looked amazing. It looked so good. He was, he was using the actual camera, and you can't really see what he's doing, because I'm sure there's actually things that are different uh, on the Wii U screen than on the TV screen. Because, like, on the camera, I'm sure it shows what, what shutter you're using and what film you're using, and if you're in the, if you're in the zero mode or not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. But uh God. Yeah. Son Sadness. Of a bitch. Just what you need to do is learn Japanese and get a Japanese Wii U and mm-hmm. get a Japanese game. And then it'll be good. I've never been so disappointed no problem. in the last few months. Oh yeah, cuz that's what I did with the Wii one, which I didn't. I guess I'll just have to go back and do that too since I already have to do it for the Wii U. God, stupid. What the fuck, man? God, I was so excited for that game. I am so disappointed. She, There's no reason. Had. There's no reason. Oh, we got like five games on the American thing. Let's not even do the Fatal Frame. Fuck you! Sounds like you better go on Twitter and do a hashtag. We I want know. If I had frame. more than three followers, I would. She needs a violin. So well, bad. if you do, if you do the hashtag, we want Fatal Frame. I'm sure you'll get some followers. They'll be like, yeah, power beanie, more power to you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right, I'll let you simmer. I can't believe it. I was, man. All right, so moving on. Man, there's supposed to be a movie go, and all this. Go. Nintendo 64, finally legal. Turns yep. 18 years old Aww. as of yesterday. I hope it's single. <laughs> I don't know, Kevin. I might be a little too young for you. And you know what that also means, right? What? The Super Mario 64 turned 18. Well... I think maybe the N64 would be for you because it does say get in or get out. I'll get in. And I bet you would. And then out. All right. <laughs> and then I'll be out. All right, moving on. Happy birthday. Nintendo Happy birthday. Uh, speaking um, more Nintendo news, <laughs> Wii U system update 5.2 gives the Wii U folders and people Ooh. are excited. Hey, yeah, because now my freaking menu screen won't be so cluttered with random games everywhere. And oh, I can I, categorize I them by tabling with a folder called RPG or <laughs> racing. Yeah, actually, that's a wonderful idea. Yeah, and, no, uh, it's, I mean, I just don't want, sorry. I don't get why. <laughs> I'm so excited. My, I like, no, because it's stupid, because like, why didn't they have this at start? Because they, they had an update, or no, I don't even know if it was an update. I think it was like in stock. You could do they it had it lot. for the 3DS for two years. Yeah, so why not? carry it over yeah Whoops. i don't know it took so long but uh Whoops. you can finally make folders and uh they also uh chain they had all other small changes like if you press the tv button the quick start menu comes up instead i really of, like the quick instead start. of using the button close home menu it it changes the button to resume like other small changes like that so wait so i mean i haven't, I haven't really seen the list of everything that they changed but there is one thing that i wish that they would actually do the same thing as they did on the 3ds as well like it's kind of similar but it's not What's that? Like, like uh, you know how like on the 3DS, if you go to like your playtime, it'll like rank everything one to three, like your most played game and everything yes. like that. It doesn't do that on the Wii U. Like, sure, like if you go to Thursday, it'll show that you played Mario Kart and it'll show how many times you played it and how long. But there's no like section that shows like every game that you've played. Man, I haven't used that section since the Wii. I love that section. I forgot about that Me section. Too. Although it was really interesting. I must like be the, the only the one. The play I... log. I must be the only one that cares. No one yeah, else does. speaking of the only one that cares, the PlayStation Home is closing its doors in March of 2015. Giving. Maybe that's where uh, Disney Infinity got all the doors from. They were donated. Uh, <laughs> the two users of the home. The t- quote. <laughs> two users. <laughs> quote. We don't want them to take our home. We want to stay here forever. This is my house. <laughs> but then they realized that was an email to their mother. 
Yeah. And they're also 36. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, PlayStation Home is a dead and no one ever used it. Although I did use it for that one time so I could get, like, five free PlayStation 1 games. Oh, jeez. They made you do, like, a specific amount of things, and I don't know if they were trying to promote things within PlayStation Home. But uh, I don't remember what they are, but it worked for me because I got all those free games. It was so weird because it was like, you can't promote this game when Sims does it so much better. <laughs> like, that's how I... I mean, well, it's not supposed to be Sims. It was supposed to be a social network type of yeah. environment. I don't know what they were going for, but uh, it, you know, with especially when you have hundreds of thousands of games available like you don't got time to be walking around in this world yeah i'm gonna play a video game that's what i got this playstation 3 for instead of walking outside i'm gonna walk around on my playstation on my avatar character (laughs) (laughs) all right so uh sakurai finally explains why super smash brothers does not have circle pad pro capabilities easy enough because not many people bought it the system cannot handle it hmm Simple as that. It says that Smash Brothers uses all of the CPU capabilities and it does not have any room for the peripheral Circle Pad Pro. So, simple as that. Okay. Oh, we'll well, accept it. All right. But uh, obviously, the new 3DS has a higher CPU power, so it can support a nub. Yes. (laughs) The C nub. Yes. So, there's a Tetris movie in the works. How do you feel about that, Kevin? Uh, who's the star actor, actress? Uh, well, we don't know yet. Uh, it's by Threshold Entertainment. They had just announced today. If it's Jennifer Tetris, Lawrence, I'll go see it. <laughs> that Tetris will be a, a movie, and it's not going to be a puzzle movie. It's going to be a live-action sci-fi epic. Um, so the first thing that is thought of is Battleship. <laughs> Remember Battleship, <laughs> Kevin? Actually, my uh, stepfather was watching it on TV the other day. And... Oh. <laughs> you know who that movie starred? Who? Rihanna. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, maybe we could, you know, maybe Iggy. What? what? <laughs> Iggy <laughs> Azalea. Iggy. I mean, hey, she, I mean, she is a realist. <laughs> I don't know. She could drop that thing like the Tetris lines. <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting. I, I, I just can't envision like like any like how this movie would would even look. What this, the story? Yeah, I, it's what, what kind of story. Could have? It's gonna it's gonna bomb. Like in my opinion, it's gonna be horrible. They're gonna try to make a movie and try to like get some popularity out of it from the Tetris name, but it's gonna have nothing to do with Tetris. That's my opinion. I thought it just have like little Easter eggs or something. Look, our battleships are like no. Tetris blocks. I'm they sure fit, they fit no. together to form the mothership. I'm, ah! I'm sure the only like form of Tetris it's gonna have in that movie is it's gonna have like like some little kid in, in a corner playing on like the original That's Game how Boy. I feel. Playing like, like the original Game Boy. Get over here! We have to Tetris. attack these monsters. <laughs> aye aye, Captain. Wait, I have it's like, sir, we don't know what to do. <gasps> He knows. Grab that little kid. He's playing Tetris on his Game Boy. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of Surf Ninjas. You ever heard of that? No. Surf Ninjas was a movie about these two kids who were destined to be like kings of this nation, and there were these ninjas that were trying to kill them. And one of the guy, one of the kids' powers was to use his Game Gear. Oh, jeez. And then he could see like directly in the future. <laughs> I just want to say that I know a lot of people who like Surf Ninjas. <laughs> Surf Ninjas was awesome. Well, and if you go I back mean, and look at it, it's horrible. <laughs> I mean, if you recall back on the uh, oh, um, Street Fighter the movie, Yo, uh, that movie Bison used like an arcade like stick setup. <laughs> that movie is so good. Like, you remember okay, that scene I'm talking about? If we could talk about, what was it again? The arca- Oh, where the thing he floated around no, in? Yeah, like it's like a a. Uh, it's like an arcade stick. <laughs> yeah, like like in the old school arcade. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so good. It's so bad. It, it's yeah. It's a movie that no, was so bad that about, it was good. We could talk about bad movies, like, but uh, it's a video yeah. game podcast. Yeah, well, it's kind of like video games. <laughs> I mean, it's about video games. Yeah, movies. Yeah. Like we could talk about the FP. Oh jeez. The DDR movie. We could talk about Ninja Turtles. I challenge you to a beat off. <laughs> the room. Huh? No, the room's not a video game, honey. Oh, we're, ta- we're talking we're about We're talking about video game, game movies. movies. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, what are you talking about? There are no Goombas in the room. 
But there are in Super Mario Brothers. But there are some Roombas. <laughs> oh, you're funny. Um, you're funny. I'm I see Mario, what you Mario, did there. And I'm Luigi Mario, and we're the Mario Brothers. Is that an actual quote? Yeah. Oh, I've never actually watched the movie. Really? No. I used to love that when I was That's a kid. A bad, I watched it over time. I just know it's a bad movie. I watched it over and so over again. No, you won't it. like it now. No. I'm, a, no. I'm actually not. A, I'm not even sure if I've actually seen that movie. Like I know, I guess seen a I'm part. I'm sure of you're sure if you've seen it. <laughs> yeah, you. You, you gotta know. know. You I remember seeing Bowser. <laughs> that's oh all yeah, I, I've seen Bowser. That, that's I all I remember. Well, moving on. Um, that's all the headlines for today. We're gonna move on to our uh, main topic. What is it? What is our main topic? <laughs> Collector's edition. There you go. Um, our title of our episode is called Collector's Edition because we want to talk about games and collecting them. Uh, I personally am a collector. I'm sure Lindsay would consider herself a collector. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kevin would consider himself a collector. I'm more of a specific collector, but I'm, I'm a, a collector. I'm a different kind of collector from what you are, though, because you like to... No, 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 no. Don't, don't throw me out there like that. A collector is a collector. I'm going like, to throw you under the bus. <laughs> I have games that I keep. Right. Like, I'm keeping them. And you have games that you're going to keep. You, well, I guess what you're saying is you keep every game. Yeah. Yeah. So you are a... 100% true collector. There you go. Does there you make go. you happy, Kevin? No. You're a true collector. I'm a specific collector. <laughs> I only no. collect games I like. But it doesn't matter what type of collector you are. This podcast is for you, especially if you want to learn how to purchase um, certain games or when to purchase certain games. Or even if you want to look on the other side. When to maybe sell certain games if you're ready to... Uh, no, they're mine. I don't want to sell them ever. That's yeah. how I <laughs> but, uh, They're my babies. <laughs> so I want to introduce everyone to one of the websites that has helped me through my buying and selling. Through, just through my general collecting. It's a website called camelcamelcamel.com. And if you go to camelcamelcamel.com... Wait, 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 wait. What? Why is it called camel, camel, camel? It is called camel, camel, camel because camels have humps. Okay. And just as the market fluctuates up and down, as do the prices of the video games. If you think of a graph. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. If you think of a graph and how it moves up and a line down. Graph, yeah. Just like a camel's hump goes up and down. Okay. So, so at least the name actually has a meaning. So that's good. <laughs> yes, it does. And actually I have a great example of how the camel, camel, camel effect actually shows up in a specific video game, but we'll get to that. What we're going to do is, Oh, let me, let me explain camel, camel, camel first. It's a website where you type in an item and it'll pull amazon.com like statistics. So, we're just going to go ahead and use this example. Mega Man X3. It, I currently have it in front of me. I typed it in, and it gives me a graph. And it shows me from 2009 all the way to current what price it was sold at. And you can choose either a brand new or you can choose used. So right now what I'm looking at is a graph of Mega Man X3. In 2009 of August, it looks like it was about $50. And at one point, there was a copy sold for over $300 in, $350. looks like, February. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's for used. Somebody yeah. wanted that again. Yeah, that's for used. And, and if there's not enough data, like, being sold, like, if there's not enough games being sold or items being sold as new, then there is no data for it. Um this doesn't have any data for new because it's probably so ridiculously hard to find a new copy of X3. And but, when you do, you probably don't want to buy it. And you probably don't buy it off Amazon. But uh, the, the thing I wanted to talk about with X3 was it just came out on uh, the Wii U uh, Virtual Console. Is that correct, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you kind of see how it declines. Um, I don't know if it was after the announcement of... But it was about like 200, 180 in March, and now it's dwindled down slowly to 150. That could be an effect of like it being on the Wii U. Maybe not, but uh, it's not. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that you can kind of think about. Like if there is a specific game that you're looking for to have 
like as a physical copy, but it, the digital version is going to come out and it's going to be really cheap. Is that going to drive the prices down of that game? Why is that game so much anyways? Um, I just didn't make a lot of them. Rarity. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's literally the only thing you can really but say. But why was, why was it so rare, do you know? I'm just it's, asking you questions well, because I, I, I sort of know. So Yeah, well, it's also it's also people say that rarity is sometimes just a word that people throw, you know, up against the wall because it makes, like, it makes games more valuable. So it could be rarity or it could not be rarity, but, it, but regardless of what it is, it's demand and supply. There's yeah. a really well, low supply. And there's really high demand. Yeah. Well, first of all, I mean, it's it's a very good game. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, no, it's an amazing game. And the thing is, is, yeah, it might have been one of those games that you know we couldn't get as a kid because <laughs> it wasn't, you know, maybe when X3 came out, the next best thing was out. Like maybe Nintendo 64 was out by then. So yeah, we, I was gonna say like like, was, behind. like was it, it was it was sold at at, the, at, the, at basically the very end of the life of the yeah Nintendo. exactly yeah because the NES games like uh, Ducktales two and Rescue Res- Rangers two Rescue Rangers yeah. two they were at the very very end of the NES. So there's like three things going for it. One, the first game was very very popular and people loved it. Two, when they released the second game, the NES was the the Super Nintendo was already out. Yeah. And the yeah. NES, they weren't, you know, they people weren't buying and then, NES games. And three, go ahead. They didn't make a lot of them. Yeah, I was gonna say you can expect them not to make a lot because since the newer, you know, version of a console is already out, then they're like, oh well, not many people are might you know gonna buy this, so we'll we'll take a chance and only ship out this many. Right. And maybe the demand was higher than expected, and they just never made any more. I don't know. You, I mean. There's really no definite answer, but it's just things you can speculate. Yeah. Moving See? on yeah. to uh, Mega Man 7, which is another game that came out on the Wii U recently. That game had shot up all the way to about to just over $200. Um, <clears throat> you can currently buy it at $159. Um, but if you look at the entire graph on Camel Camel Camel, it started out in February 2010 at about 40 bucks. Man, some of these games <laughs> just makes you go, man. I really wish I bought it in 2010. <laughs> that was the X3 was 30 bucks. Yeah, it's it's crazy. The reason, I mean, I of course, think- you don't know that because obviously you can't tell the future. That's <laughs> so. why it makes no. you it makes you antsy when new games come out and you're like, oh, they're not gonna make very many of these. Maybe I should just. Maybe I should just buy it. I have no interest in it, but maybe I should just buy it because it'll be one of those games. You but know, the, the thing is, the reason why certain games move up in price. Most most of the time, it's because there's something that happened within the world, within the realm of news, like the media or like some big announcement that makes people think about Mega Man again. So maybe in 2010, 2011, 2012, there was no huge news about Mega Man. But in 2013, they started people started talking more about Mega Man because of whatever, um, you know, Inafune left. Um, I'm sure he left. He left way before 2013. But, you know. Maybe the Mighty Number no. Nine uh, Kickstarter. Maybe that had something to do with people thinking about Mega Man a lot. You got to think about those things and uh, how it affects, like how prices will like be in video games. Like a, uh, a, a like, really good example. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you're about to bring that yeah. up. A really good example with that would be Pokemon Yellow. Uh, any just maybe any Pokemon game. Really, back when Twitch plays Pokemon came out. That had a drastic, drastic effect on the price of this specific game, Pokemon Yellow. I think they actually played Pokemon Red on Twitch Plays Pokemon. Yeah. I think they started somewhere like in February or March. And you can literally say on this graph that it moved up from $25 all the way to $50 Jeez. in like in because like everybody's, early uh, mid-March. Everybody's uh, nostalgia bone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everyone's all hyped up. You know, and ever since the Twitch plays Pokemon hype like died down, it's currently at twenty one dollars. Back to about where <laughs> yeah, it was. so it's back to where it was before Twitch plays Pokemon started. So it's like, as a collector, you kind of got to be aware of these things and just kind of. Uh, well, you don't have to be aware now because you can just go to this website and it'll yeah. tell you exactly what the trend is. You know. You- you probably laugh at this, but like, um, you might want to take a chance if a game, you know, comes out like, hey, you know what, you know, this game might be rare or, or something. So I'll, I'll go ahead and buy it and either not open it or buy two. Well, well actually, and then there is a system that, it, well, it's not really a system. There's, 
there's a I, I want to talk about that at the end it's not really that easy to figure out it's really difficult actually there's no way you can tell what right. games are going to be you know rare in the future or not but uh, I do have an inkling of one specific game and we'll, we'll get to when we get there. You got dogs in the background. Well, I have a dog in the background. Who let the dogs out? I don't know. They're, they're playing with the dog. <laughs> well, the, that, the, it goes woof, yeah. woof. You know how the song yeah, goes, right? I yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, song. I'm a 90s guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it either actually came out like, what, 2000 or something. I don't know. Whatever. Don't Baja Man. Anyway. Um, okay, so I wanted to give the example of, like, the camel, camel, camel effect. If you go and look up NCAA Basketball 10 for the Xbox 360, it gives the perfect example of the camel, camel, camel effect. And when, when I say that, it means a game that specifically goes up, then down, then up, then down, and then up, and then down. And it's kind of... This game, you can actually predict what's going to happen at a certain time frame. So let me let me set this out for you. NCAA basketball gets popular in March because of March Madness. You follow me, Kevin? Right. Okay. So when March Madness comes, when March Madness is going on, that's when you see the peak of the price points. So... Maybe in the summer of 2010, the game is $10. But in March of the next year, it's $50. Then $10. Then $60. Then $10. Then $90. This has happened every year since 2011. That's silly. <laughs> it's But it makes sense. I mean, yeah, it does make sense. Yes, but, but let me tell silly. you why. And you, it, This will only work for NCAA Basketball 10. And the reason this works is because this is the last NCAA basketball game ever created on anything. You won't find an 11, 12, 13, 14. If you find, like, let's say they came out NCAA basketball 15 next year, I guarantee this game will probably not sell as high anymore. Because now they have a new NCAA basketball game to play, then they don't have to buy this old 10 anymore. But since this is the last one out, that's the only one that they can buy to get to to get the a video game with NCAA basketball with the on most up to date as they can get cuz exactly t- ten or 9 is not going to be $90 NCAA basketball 9 is like 5 so the chances are if you do want to buy this game which is considered a rare game i don't really think it's rare i just think it's a game that's high in demand every march <laughs> um you want to wait till about the summer and that's actually now because it's $24 right now but I guarantee when March Madness hits next year, it's going to go back up to about 60 or even more. And and it shows right there in the graph every year it peaks at March. The, the graphs don't lie. <laughs> I want to meet these people that are like, dude, I'm so hyped for freaking NCAA basketball. I have to play this game. I'm going to spend 90 bucks on it. Well, obviously, <laughs> what's been the most expensive game you've paid money for? A thousand dollars? No, sorry, nine hundred. Nine hundred. What game was it? Super Metroid. Yeah, brand new, right? Brand new. So there are people out there. Is like, who the fuck would pay nine hundred dollars for a Super oh, Metroid? Yeah. <laughs> some some fucking loser guy that <laughs> likes Metroid. You know, I mean, there, I mean, there are tons of people out there, and especially when like something like basketball goes on every year, like. People the get, demand builds up. I mean, people get hyped for their for sports. their teams. The yeah. sports, they, man. For not even just sports, just like they got their their favorite team and they they root for them. I mean, I mean. And then they want to play them on their the, Xbox. It's one of the biggest money making things ever, and now video games is encroaching. Another example, we're sticking with the sports uh, from here on out because it's a really good example. Um, FIFA Soccer 13 for the Wii. And this is a special one that I want to talk about because this is ha- this was having the same effect, uh, just like NCAA basketball. FIFA 13 was the last um, Nintendo Wii FIFA game. They didn't have a FIFA 14. So around Christmas, when everyone was like wanting, you know, whatever game they wanted, FIFA 13 for the Wii started shooting up. And we're talking the used copy, like it shot up all the way to seventy nine dollars. Wow. Yeah. And 
before December, before like the holidays, that game was only twenty five, thirty dollars. So it would have been easily predicted that next year would have the same or this year, actually this year for before the holidays, it would have the same outcome. But here's what happened. The kicker. <laughs> FIFA. <laughs> 15, they actually released FIFA 15 for the Wii this year. Oh, really? As, wow. I think it releases either today or tomorrow or to release last week or no, whatever. It released last week. Oh, yeah, it I did release it. last week <laughs> on the 26th. Mm-hmm. So FIFA 13 is now just going to just fall like completely decrease right and it's funny because it, it i had some, obsolete <laughs> yeah i had some brand new copies of that game and i was like oh crap i gotta sell them like real quick <laughs> yeah so it's it's like there was a fifa 14 on the wii u but the people who no sold- there wasn't there wasn't even a fifa 14 on the wii u there wasn't a no FIFA, there, there was, was no f- 14 on the wii or the wii u there's no fifa game on the was there there's a fifa, a FIFA soccer 13 on the wii u but that game oh, was always game. cheap because no one had a wii u yeah yeah so, so. it's you know, it's the people who who only have a Wii now. They're not going to get a Wii U, so they're going to buy the latest game on their Wii. Let me say that again. No one, not many people that wanted to play a soccer game had a, a Wii, Wii U. U. <laughs> people point. bought Wii U to play a Nintendo game, first party Nintendo game. So the fee for soccer just wasn't a good fit at that time. So, and obviously, I mean, they feel like that the Wii still has the install base, you know, so that they can release the 15 version specifically on the Wii and not the Wii U. That's strange. I don't think it's strange at all. I think it shows in the data that FIFA Soccer 13 probably sold so horribly for the Wii U. It's like, nah, but FIFA 13 for the Wii probably sold a lot better. And you know, a hundred million consoles are out there. I mean, it's strange that because it's two, two games away from the last game, but that is strange. They can still release it on an older console. And, uh, it's like, it kind of either shows that uh, they, they probably have to dumb it down to fit on the Wii or that it's just not a very, you know, I mean the graphics, yeah. no, 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 I don't think that has anything to do. I think, yeah, I think they do. I think they do dumb down the graphics, obviously, you know, they just want to have a game out on the Wii so that they can reach that casual audience or reach the audience of people that for some reason only has a Nintendo Wii. It's cheap. Yeah, and it's only $30 brand new. I knew people who had no other system but the Wii, and they were not like, you know, they weren't gamers. They were casual, let's play uh, Wii Sports, I guess. Yeah, you yeah. Know. So, What you think, Kevin? Well, <laughs> I mean, no, I, 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 I for one don't really care about sports games in general. <laughs> but this is important information. I mean, it is very important information because it can help someone because not only sell their games or buy them both. So Not only, I mean, this doesn't have to be a sports thing. This can also be... For example, this can also this can also work at like something that comes out every year, such as Call of Duty. Well, no, like, well, yeah, but like, such say, 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 like when Doom Four got announced, I'm sure some people were like, "Yo, I want to play some Doom." So, like, someone might have gone out and looked to buy a Doom Six. Yes, you understand because, and then actually, it's funny because when Hyrule Warriors came out, I was looking at other Zelda games, and the only one that I really saw like a little boost uh from was zelda ocarina of time 3d and like they're completely sold out on amazon like if you look at amazon.com right now it says like two to five weeks shipping because people have been buying that crap so we don't know if maybe you know ocarina of time 3d may go up in price a little or you know they might just like get some more supply out real quick oh my god we need some more supply and like you know, be able to take care of that demand, but I mean that demand's gonna go down as Hyrule Warriors like like comes out longer. So uh, you never know. You just gotta be ahead of the game, just like with Elo, Kevin. You gotta be ahead of the game. <laughs> yeah, but you're not gonna make any money on Elo. Well, like back, <laughs> you know, like back when I asked you about like you know, say like a new game comes out and you and you might think you know what I'm gonna take a chance in this game and buy either one and never open it. Or, like, by two. Well, I did that with the game, and you probably get a laugh out of this, but, like, I did it with Mother M. I mean, Mother M. Other M. Yeah. I do want to re- I do want to reiterate. This is not just about selling. This is also about buying. Oh, I know. But, like, I'm telling uh, Lindsay, because Lindsay says, you know, sell the game. No! It's also about buying it cheapy. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, like, they came out with the Prime Collection, and then they stopped, stopped making them. So then, I'm thinking, you know what? That might happen with Other M. 
because you know, yeah, why yeah, not? Didn't. Why not? Because obviously Metroid doesn't like you know like the best selling game that that they have for Nintendo. So I think you know what, I'll buy two. I'll take a chance. I got some extra money, so I'm not gonna hurt the bank by spending uh, an extra sixty bucks on this game. And then of course everything backfired. The game. I think at one point it was like what ten dollars or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's still ten dollars, honestly, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. so I have two copies. One's still unopened. <laughs> because... But the thing is, like you and you as a collector, I don't think you really care that much. No, I don't. Because that's kind of, that's what you wanted anyway. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not like, damn man, I could have made some money, but oh well, now I'm now I'm down. You know, yeah, yeah. fifty bucks. It's only worth ten dollars now. And... No big deal. Nope. Yeah. All right. Well, good. So, what, was it two or three weeks ago? I I talked about this game and how I predicted that it was going to go up in price. NCAA Football 14 uh, for the PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360, you know, either or. More specifically the Xbox because there's a bigger install base in the U.S. That, it is the last NCAA football game from EA Sports as of now. They announced that they weren't making one in, in 20... Uh, they weren't making one for 2015. So this game came out last year, and if they made a new football NCAA football game, it'd be out right now. It would have been out. It would have been out before Madden came out. Uh, so my prediction was it's going to go up in price around you know November, December. And if you look on Camel, 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 you can see that it has risen in price. As of maybe mid-August, the game has been selling like about $30 and under, but now it's currently at $42.99, brand new. Wow. <laughs> and as as it gets closer to like, you know, postseason and then the bowl games and then like the finals, like people going to be real hyped and like they're going to be wanting to play that NCAA football. And I see this game boosting up like $60, $70. For anyone out there that wants a quick buck and trusts what I say, it it wouldn't hurt to you know buy one or two copies, um, especially if you can find it now because they're disappearing like really quickly. Um, the only one that I could find um, is Best Buy currently has some PlayStation Three copies available for thirty four ninety nine or thirty two ninety nine something like that, but they're selling out. That's pretty much what I wanted to talk about and how you could uh, kind of see in advance how games may fluctuate in price more specifically retro games older games new games new games are obviously they're going to go down in price for the most part with except with like few ex- exceptions like pikmin 3 man pikmin 3 never goes down <laughs> that game is 60 dollars forever damn yeah but like your ps3 and PS4, Xbox releases, like most of those are going to just, you know, they're going to go down eventually if you don't buy it day one. But obviously, if you really want the game, you're going to buy it day one, so it really doesn't matter. Right. You're not collecting at that point. You're just wanting to play the game. What I kind of do is I'll take this website and just kind of remind myself what are the top games, like if it's Pokemon Yellow or Pokemon Red or it's whatever, and then... If I'm out and about, like usually I'll find the best deals. You know, if you just if you have if you, I guess what I'm saying is like if you go to the flea market, and you can know how much you should spend on this game for you to still make money off of it. By the way, if they had a Camel 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 app for mobile, I would love it, but they don't, unfortunately. But you can go on your mobile like internet browser and go to it. I mean, it takes a little bit more time to scroll through, but um, you'll get the same amount of data. Um, but what I was going to really say is um, if if you're doing this just collect, it's also good to, if you don't want to buy it or sell it or whatever. I mean, Camel 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 is good just to know what it's worth so you're not gypped. Like if you're, yeah, absolutely. If you're, if you're just out to collect a game and you really like uh, SWAT cats for Super Nintendo, you should know how much can reasonably pay for that game. You don't want to go to a place and they're trying to sell it to you for $100 when you know it's it's worth 80 but you really want the game so so and you can actually show them yeah it's so, funny. see look at this graph it was 80 dollars, but now it's 46 i'll just go online and buy it for 46 yeah you don't want to you don't you want to you know especially the games that you want just make sure you're getting at least a fair price like 
I mean, you always know it's a good price, but you don't want to you, you, you don't want to get that blow, you know, like, well, man, I could have just bought this game for 40 bucks because it's only worth 40 bucks. And that guy tricked me in buying 60 for it. So I think that's I think that's that's what I mostly use it for, because I don't usually I don't usually uh, resell stuff. I usually keep it, but I don't I it, it really hurts me when I pay when I overpay for something. Yeah, uh, yeah, I get that same feeling too. And just, I mean, you don't have to use Camel, Camel, Camel. It's just really nice to know, like, the uh, history data. And I think sometimes it's very helpful if you ever see a pattern in how certain games may price. It may help your buying strategies. But there is also a simpler website out there for people that just want the number. Like, how much is this game? All you got to do is go to pricecharting.com. If that you go to, does have an app. Yeah. Yeah, Price Charting actually has an app. And if you go there, you can literally type in the game. It'll tell you how much it goes for new, how much it goes for used, and how much it goes for complete, like in box, how much it goes for completely loose, if you like just have disc only. That's a good website for just knowing prices. But Camel 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 is good for knowing histories and trends. And also, what Camel 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 is actually for, you can actually uh, get a membership, not a membership, you can register for the website, and you can, let's say you want to buy a toaster, so you type in a toaster, and you say, I want to pay no more than $20 for this toaster. You can set up an alert, and if that price on Amazon ever goes under $20, it'll send you an email and say, hey, it's under $20, you should buy it. So that's what this site is actually really good for. For tracking uh, prices um, to go under a certain amount, so you don't want to buy Hyrule Warriors now. You want to wait till it goes like under forty-five dollars. You just type in forty-five as the limit, and it'll send you an alert when it goes under forty-five dollars. So um, that's another way to use Camel, Camel, Camel. What do you think, Kevin? I've also done like a different method. It's I mean, it's obviously not the best way because there's actually websites for it. But like, if you go on eBay and it, you know, say like you type in Earthbound, and and like you can you know check to see how much things have you know. Or like how much it is, like you get like a general ballpark figure for it. Yeah. Uh, but but like, but like you have to make sure that you go on the side and, and put in like you know items that have actually sold. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna I was gonna input that. I was like, make sure you're like people who actually. Paid yeah, because someone it. could put it. Uh, yeah, I want I want you know five thousand dollars for this. It doesn't mean you're gonna get five thousand dollars yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah. I've I've done the mistake where I was like, man, this game's going for five thousand. It's not really because it's just what someone put up there. But right. you must also realize that at the same time. All you need is one person. Yeah, that they they, they yeah. want that game so bad. That one person Usually, that doesn't know that that game is actually a thousand dollars, they'll you, buy it for five thousand. So you 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 do that, and it, I I like eBay because you can you can see you know, what they paid for the complete, but also you know you just if you have sort of a knack for this and you, you do it a lot of times, you can rule out outliers and you can take an average and it's and it's but it usually works about the same way as these websites do and yeah i was gonna say actually price charting is that they take the average of a certain like time frame and give you the price that it's going for um through ebay so price charting actually takes ebay auctions and purchases and averages them out to come up with a number so and maybe if, you, if you're lucky, someone might be selling a game that's below price. Sorry, Tiger. Um, and you could get a great deal. <laughs> hey, you just reminded me of one amazing thing that I did not share. And this this is like ultra secret thing that I wouldn't tell people because it's more competition. If you go to pricecharting.com, and this is specific for video games. If you go to pricecharting.com and then go under tools and then go under eBay Game Sniper. It's literally a page that refreshes every time there is a video game deal under the average price. And wow. the thing, and on this page, let's say you want to save um, on games more than $10. So it's like you want to pay less than $10 the average price. All you got to do is type in 10 and just leave the page open. When you come back, whenever you come back, it'll show you a list in real time of video games that are like currently going to close in like less than five minutes or video games that are currently buy it now that have a $10 savings. Oh, wow. This game, this, this website, this page is amazing, especially if, if you are a seller. I ain't going to lie. If you're a seller and 
you're looking for things to sell. Like, oh, I just looked. I just, like, something just popped up right now. Killzone Trilogy usually sells for $15, and it's selling for $9. So there's there's some small things, but sometimes there's some big things. Um, I think one example, I bought a brand new uh, Prince of Persia for the NES. I think I want to say I bought it for $50 from this, like, page because it popped up. And I clicked on it, and I was like, brand new, $50, hell yeah, click, buy. No. And no, I was, I remember. Yeah, it was because of the spice because I, I was looking it up and I found it and I was like, that's weird. So I, I, you were at work and I texted you and you're like, what? And you bought it. Oh, and okay. I was like, oh really? I, I mean, cause okay. I was looking it up cause I really wanted it. So I maybe did. she found it and then I bought it. But it was because of this website. Yeah. And I just remember that. And was the fun. game is worth over a hundred dollars. Oh, nice. So I think what happened was someone put it, buy it now. Yeah. And like it was like it was just posted at that point. It was like it was. It, it just came up and it was like ten minutes old. I was like, Whoa. and yeah. then I was like, I'm gonna buy it. You don't buy it. I don't really have the money. And he's like, Oh, write it. Right right okay. Yeah. I don't even think he talked to me before. He said, oh, I already bought it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Okay, good. <laughs> so yeah. So. so that's that's some random uh, knowledge up in my noggin that I've been keeping from people. <laughs> Not really keeping from people. And if I could use uh, it, anyone could use it. Because I was literally just on here, like, looking for that game. And I thought, oh, he's got this website open. I'll try it. Oh, I get it. So. What? <laughs> I hope this information out there helps uh, bring more competition for me. <laughs> and, uh, no, I think I just think it's really helpful information that will uh, help people either if they're buying or if they're selling. Or, you know, just wanting to know just price data in general. Yeah, or even just collecting, you know. Well, they have to buy for that, so. All right. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about for today. And uh, before we exit, you know what time it is. And now, an editorial with Kevin Fields, If Anyone Cares. If Anyone Cares. I've been playing a little bit. Well, a lot of Diablo 3, if you couldn't tell. Put maybe 200 hours in my witch doctor, and I don't know. It feels like a, like two weeks, but I see a lot of people all the time in general chat asking, "Hey, can anybody power level me to 70? Why are you even playing the game? Like seriously, because the whole point of the game is to play your class, experience the class. You know, you get you get your feel for the character. You learn all the skills. You know what does what. But if you just have someone power level you to 70 and you don't know jack shit about your character, like, why are you even playing? I mean, I'm not generally that mean guy, but it's just like, seriously, why are you even playing the game? You go play Mario Kart or something. I don't know. You just hop on and you go. You don't level up. Nothing to learn other than just steering, which you already know how to do because you drive a car in real life. So, yeah, uh, that's all I got for that. Level your own damn character. That was an editorial from Kevin Fields, if anyone cares. And if you don't care, neither do I. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Once again, I just want to let everybody know that we are on iTunes. We are on Stitcher Radio. We are on TuneIn Radio. And you can subscribe to us if you like our podcast. You know what I want to do? What do you want to do? I want to give away some... Nintendo codes. Ooh. Um, if anyone out there has Club Nintendo, I ha- I literally have s- a stack of unused Nintendo codes, and all you gotta do, I want you to tweet me, like send me a tweet to at Tiger Style T Y G E R S T Y L E at Tiger Style, and all you gotta do is say, hey, I want a Nintendo code, or hey, give me that Club Nintendo code. You know, just tweet me, just to, just to. It's like proof. It's proof that you've listened to this episode. Because what am I doing this for if we're just doing it for ourselves? Like, is anyone out there listening to us? Is anyone? Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Once again, uh, my Twitter is at TigerStyle. Mine's at Nintendo Bigfoot. I'm at Power Beanie. She uh, needs followers. I don't have any. I don't have <laughs> wow, any. that actually worked out really good. I'm telling you, do hashtag we want Fatal Frame. And I'm telling you, people will be like, yeah! W-I-I want Fatal Frame. I'm telling you, you'll get favorites, you'll get whatever. want Fatal Frame, and you should provide. (laughs) (laughs) That's a long hashtag. Anyway. 
All right, it's time to go. We're hungry. Me too. Like Kevin always. Includes you, Kevin. Oh. Me. Always includes you. We, you. We. Anyway. Uh, hashtag right. we are hungry. You. I'm Joshua Campbell, also known as Tiger. I'm Kevin Fields, also known as Nintendo Bigfoot. I'm Lindsay. Hi. 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 Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> All right. We will have you guys listen to us next time. Next time. See ya. <laughs>